Hello guys, uh, Dan here, welcome back. Uh, in today's video I will paint uh, Pesius uh, the Myrmidon for the Nomads. I couldn't wait to paint this character because of his uh, very interesting uh, backstory. So I was really excited coming into this project. Uh, on the other side I'm going to paint him uh, in a more traditional way. I will show you how to paint uh, white over the black primer. So without uh, further ado, sit back, relax and uh, let's start. As I mentioned before, I primed the model with the black primer. I went uh, with the two passes and tried to achieve the even coat all around so you don't see any metal under. First color that I'm going to use today will be a basalt gray. And uh, I will actually use a lot of this color in the beginning step to try to define this model. I will start by uh, putting this color as my base color uh, on the, all the panels uh, that I want uh, to be white uh, later. I will go around the model and uh, I will paint this very lightly in uh, two very thin coats. Uh, but the thing that I will try to achieve is uh, try not to go inside the recesses and in the shade areas. I will try to use my black undercoat as my uh, future shadow so that I don't need uh, to do the, any uh, extra shadows or any extra washes after. After I'm done with that, uh, I will still keep uh, using the same color, uh, but this time I will proceed uh, to highlight all the details uh, that I want to remain black on this model. In this case, uh, I will start uh, with his uh, handguns and uh, gloves, uh, some pieces of his helmet uh, and actually everything that's left. <laughs> more or less. Uh, for the guns I will do the edge highlight so I will try to use the side of my brush in most of the cases and try to pull uh, sharp lines, uh, very thin lines actually, to highlight all the sharp edges that this model have. So you will go around and uh, try to do as much as you can. The more of these lines you do it will define the model even more and it will look really good on the table. After I'm finished with that, uh, I will paint uh, this uh, under armor that he have on his uh, sleeves uh, and the side of his legs uh, with this color as well. In uh, one uh, thin coat and I will try to and not paint the recesses. So I will try to maintain like a consistency uh, since uh, beginning uh, avoiding uh, painting inside the recesses. We will leave the grey colors uh, on the side for now and start adding little contrast on the model. I will take uh, Evil Sun Scarlet and uh, I will uh, paint a couple of these details that he have on his legs, a couple of exhausts uh, on the jetpacks and uh, LED lights on his arms and legs uh, with this paint. For the next step I will create a wash from the periscopes. As you can see on my finger it's like very diluted so I put one drop of this paint and like four or five drops of water on my palette and then I mix all. I will use this mix to shade uh, all this cell shaded armor on his uh, arms uh, and around the body and the legs. This will give a blue tint to the armor and make it uh, slightly different from the rest of the grey armor. For the next step I will use uh, Apothecary White Contrast Paint and I will use this as my uh, shade 
So I will actually shade uh, with this paint uh, all the armor panels that I want to uh, repaint white after. I will go very lightly in uh, one uh, medium coat, so you don't want it too thin and you don't want it too thick. So try to find the balance, so when you, whenever you see that there is a lot of pulling of the paint, just dry your brush and uh, collect that pulling. Uh, on the flat armor panels, like his shoulder uh, plates, you actually don't want a lot of paint there because uh, uh, they are flat, so we will repaint most of them, so you will go very light there. I will start now highlighting the white armor panels. I will pick up Ultu and Grey and uh, first things uh, I will put a couple of drops of this paint on my wet palette and add a few drops of water. Uh, because uh, if you don't add any water to this paint and you start painting it will start getting dry very quick and it will become super chalky and it will be a really pain to paint like that. So you have to add a few water and then mix everything on your wet palette. Uh, it will be a little transparent, so you will have to go over your model like in a two or a three very thin coats uh, are under the same area to have a good coverage. So after applying the first coat, uh, wait for the few minutes uh, for the color to completely dry and then go over it uh, again and then repeat that step two or three times until you get uh, perfect coverage. And here you will repaint uh, like 95% of the previous uh, color with this and the uh, only thing that you want to avoid is the recess area uh, just to leave the, the shadow or if you have two armor panels next to each other you will leave that line in between them uh, just to separate it and make a little contrast. Next step will be uh, to highlight uh, all the black armor panels. So I will pick up a pure white color and this time uh, I will do the same edge highlights as I did uh, with the gray, uh, but this time I will cover a little less areas. So if like on the top of the gun I draw like the whole line, I will draw a little shorter line. So just uh, that you can see the both uh, black gray and white gradient, uh, so it will make uh, these highlights uh, really good. So try to use uh, the side of your brush as much as you can, uh, where that is not possible, uh, just use the tip of the brush and go around the model and highlight uh, literally every single sharp area or the sharp edge uh, that you can see and that you want to be black and this will uh, really make this model stand out and uh, make it like a really uh, looking good. Uh, next step uh, is to highlight uh, the armor on his uh, sleeves and legs. So I will use a Fenrisian grey and then I will use the tip of my brush and just uh, draw a dot on every single uh, this uh, little cell shaded thing that they, he have on his armor. Uh, if you don't have patience and you're not that precise, you can uh, go and lightly dry brush this. Uh, but if you have a more detailed and much better look, uh, I suggest uh, just to make these little dots. Uh, it is a little time consuming, uh, but the effect will be much better. Uh, to finish off with these uh, red uh, lights, uh, 
and uh, LEDs. Uh, I will use the orange uh, fire and I will just uh, draw a little thin highlights. So on these lights that he have, you will put uh, one little dot in the middle. Uh, on the jetpack, uh, you will just edge highlight it. And uh, on these panels that he have on the legs, uh, I will just uh, highlight the edges. Uh, to finish uh, painting the holsters uh, for the gun, I will use uh, Cavalry Brown and uh, I will paint them uh, very lightly in uh, two very thin coats uh, to have a good and even coverage. Uh, I will be careful here when I paint uh, not to paint it to the recesses because I want to keep those uh, details uh, on the holster and I don't want to spend any time washing this. Uh, so I will just uh, paint this very careful and use my black undercoat as my shadow. Uh, to finish highlighting the holster, I will use the orange brown and uh, I will, will simulate like the warm uh, letter effect uh, by stippling the edges uh, of the holster uh, with the tip of my brush. And on the other side, I will use uh, just the tip of my brush and draw a very thin lines in the different directions. Uh, to finish painting the sword, I will use uh, blue-green, uh, dark Prussian blue and uh, white. And uh, I will apply it uh, on the sword on three segments. So like on the top, top left corner I will apply uh, dark Prussian blue, then in the middle I will apply the blue-green and at the end I will mix little white and the blue-green and uh, I will try to glaze these colors to create transition. Uh, so you have to repeat this couple of times to get the transitions. Uh, it's not that complicated, uh, just add a little water to the paints uh, so they blend together and then try mixing them uh, on the sword while they are still wet. And then uh, after you are satisfied uh, with the colors, just leave everything to dry. And to finalize the sword, uh, I will use a pure white and just uh, do the edge highlight uh, on all these edges. I will use the side of my brush. I will try to make uh, like a 45 degree to 90 degree angle against the surface of the sword and just uh, pull uh, very thin lines just to define the edges. finish off with the base uh, for the model, I painted this uh, stone rock that he's landing on. Uh, how I did it is actually, I pick up all the leftovers and all the random colors that I have uh, on my wet palette and just start mixing them together and painting this stone. Uh, because kind of in the nature, the stone is not actually really gray. How do we see it? Like and how do we usually paint it? It usually have like more colors in it from the minerals and the stuff that are in the stone. So I was just picking up random color. I think I have a gray there, white, uh, some shades of blue, some shades of brown. And I was just randomly painting uh, uh, around this uh, stone. For this little pipe, uh, I used the uh, gun metal and I just painted it uh, in uh, one uh, thick coat. After that, I used the uh, strong tone as my wash and I covered the whole stone uh, with uh, one uh, very thick coat of this wash. So just be very generous and uh, cover everything. Let's be careful not to go over his boots uh, since we already completed painting that.
and uh, to finish off uh, with this model I will just use uh, Terminator stone as my dry brush and I will go very lightly and uh, dry brush uh, this uh, stone uh, you have to be really careful here not to go over the boosts so pick up one of your small uh, brushes uh, for a dry brushing and just go slowly around and pick up these uh, areas just to create these uh, highlights Uh, next step is completely optional. I will use Aniquilat Oxide, uh, which is GW Technical Paint, uh, and I will create uh, a rust effect uh, on this pipe. Uh, so I will just uh, go around this pipe on some random areas and uh, put this oxide color. The last thing that I'm going to do today is to use these uh, Vallejo pigments uh, just to create uh, some dust effect uh, on his uh, boots and that stone uh, from the landing. Uh, so I will just take it on my dry brush and go lightly around and just spread those pigments. And uh, that's it. Uh, I will call this uh, model done uh, guys uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and uh, I gave you some nice ideas uh, and uh, tips uh, so how can you uh, speed up your painting uh, if you did uh, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel uh, it will mean a lot to me and uh, it will help this uh, video spread around and the channel to grow and if you have any comments uh, or suggestions please leave them in the section down below and I will do my best to reply. Uh, this is all for now from me, uh, stay safe, take care and uh, see you in the next video, bye bye!